Hi, this is Matt Heaton, and I'm here to talk to you today a little bit about jig rhythm. So, jigs uh, are in 6-8, and what that means is there are groups of three for every every big beat. So, duppity 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 dupp. Right? Now, if you do a straight alternating downstroke upstroke, you're going to end up with your a strong beat on an upstroke every other time. Meaning Okay. Now that in and of itself isn't terrible, but you have two things kind of working against you with that. One, you are Gravity is working against you because this is harder than letting your arm fall, right? You have to to actually to actually accent an upstroke. You really need to engage your muscles in a different way than just you know downstrokes kind of take care of themselves. Um, there's that, and there's the fact that you are hitting you know on one you're hitting the high strings instead of the low strings, so it's a different sound. That is not to say that you can't do it. People do, you know, there are some, some beautiful players. Who can actually, you know, make it sound kind of jiggy. But if you are not very cautious with that, it will turn into a waltz. Where you just aren't really hearing, you know, it's groups of three, but it's not really, you're not really feeling it jig-wise. So the solution to all this is doing the patented jig rhythm, which uh, I don't know, majority, but an awful lot of, a lot of backers will do this, where you play groups of three. You play down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down. So you end up with two downstrokes in a row, right? Down, up, down, down, up, down. So, the couple things about this, the third downstroke in the group of three is kind of choked off. You're not really, it's not a full follow through. You see, my hand kind of bounces, bounces off the strings to get back in place for the next downstroke. Because if you went all the way down, then you would be here, and you want to be here, and in order to get here, you would do another upstroke, and it would be kind of weird. So, um, that's one thing. And for a lot, when you first start doing this, it's a little tricky. You gotta think about it. But you gotta practice it enough so that you get it into your hands so you're not thinking about it. Because you want it, you want it to be automatic enough that you can just, you know, you're not thinking at all, your hand can just do it all day, you can carry on a conversation, you can, you know, make instructional videos, whatever you want, while your hand is still doing this rhythm. Yeah. So a couple ways to do that. Uh, I talked about this in the real video too. But if you take, if you break it down where you're going, dum, 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 just downstrokes, then add in the threes. You notice I'm muting my strings in the left hand. Uh, that's so I don't have to listen to a bunch of jangly stuff when all I want to hear is the rhythm. All I want is the attack for this. Your neighbors will thank you too. All right. So then we can maybe increase two, two, three, four, one. Now rest. Now one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. So that's one one thing is just building your endurance, building um, the. When you really start out doing it, just take a metronome and just have it on a very slow tempo and go down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. Just as slow as you like. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. Just as long as you're getting it right, and then you know, kind of inch that up a little bit. Up, 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 up. Then when you get it, when you get to the point where you can do it, you can do it at a reasonable tempo, 
but you can't keep doing it at a reasonable tempo. Like your hand gets tired and then you start getting tense and it, it falls off the rails. That's when that the, the alternating trick go, comes in where you, you know, like if you can play at this fast, but you know, after a certain time, or maybe a little faster, right? Maybe you get a little bit, uh, get a little tense and then it starts getting kind of messed up. Um, try, try to do that and then rest, 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 rest. Give me more rest, take rest. Then back to this. And rest, 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 rest. Right, and then you can, you can decrease the amount of rest you're taking um, or and or increase the amount of um, of, of threes that you're doing. Uh, you can, there are some, some cool accents you can bring out with this pattern. Uh, one of them would be a little bit of lift, kind of a backbeat. Yuck, deep duck, deep duck, deep duck, deep duck. On the third one. So it's, all, it, it's a very, it's a cool sound and it, it's, it's a little bit uneven. It's not, they're not all the same. Like it, it's got kind of a lopey feel to it, which I think is a plus in this case. You know, you try, the way to approach it is try to make it as even as you can, realizing that it will never be completely even. And so you will, it will, you, you will strive for the perfect amount of unevenness. And then it provides a really nice, uh, a nice bed for the jigs. And let's see, so yeah, those little those little um, triplet accents can just kind of happen. Uh, down. And there you go. So that's uh, that is how I play jigs. Uh, hope that you find that useful, and uh, hope to see you soon. Take care.